At this stage in our portfolio development, we've used file and place and brought in a variety of images, including floor plans, materials, um, photographs, that type of thing. Some have the background, some have been removed. For example, this sofa down here at the bottom has had the background removed, so it, um, you know, looks a little bit more seamless in our portfolio versus something like this where there's a lot of um, rectilinear edges and things like that. So once you start getting in you know a lot of your images you'll want to start uh, you know adding some text and titles and that type of thing um, and you want to start doing this pretty early on in the process uh, first of all because it takes a long time to figure out what you want to say in addition to that it's also uh, a very important graphic element, the type that you use is sort of, you can kind of think of it as the finishing touch on your portfolio. It's a little bit like the period at the end of the sentence. So the pages really feel a lot different once you have some type involved. What I've done here on the side is just added some generic text, uh, you're just using the, the simple type tool over here, including, you know, for example, a title, location, and a little bit of information about the condo unit, for example. So what we want to do is figure out a good way of working with the type. If you want to make changes, you know, if you want to come in and change, uh, you know, the font or something like that, you know, we know that we can go in, highlight the text, and then come up to the top and, you know, change the type of font that we use. We can change the size, for example. And we can go in manually and do that for every single text box. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. It can, however, become a little bit tedious after a while. So what we can do is use one of InDesign's very handy tools to make that process a little bit more um, automated. And what we're looking for are character styles. What you want to do is come up to the word window at the top of the screen and then come down to the word styles. You'll notice here that there are a variety of styles that you can set up, including objects, paragraphs, and so on. The one we're concerned about right now is character styles. Once we get into character styles, I'm actually going to grab this and put it over so it docks under the rest of my menus, just to get it out of the way a little bit. And then you'll see I can open it up. There aren't any character styles set up as default, so that's why it says none. So what we're going to do is actually create our own. Down at the bottom of this menu, you'll see that new, it looks like the new layer button, for example. Uh, so we'll click on that, and you'll see it just says character style one. If I double click on character style one, it will open up this menu. Within here, you have the options to change a lot. Um, there's a lot about the character style that you can work with, but we're just gonna keep it pretty simple. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually change from the word general to the basic character format. So I'm not gonna change the name yet because I don't quite know what I wanna name it. You'll see here that we could be basing it on a previous style if we had some more in here, but we don't have that yet. So I'll go to basic character formats and this is where we're going to get into the real meat of what we're doing here. So the first thing we're going to do is pick the font family. Okay, so I'm going to click on that and it will open up all of the fonts that I have available to me. Um, on a Mac it might be different, but on a PC version it's not giving me the, the preview of the font here. So it would be in your best interest to kind of know ahead of time what you're looking for. Um, but, you know, for example, maybe I will pick um, this this one right here, this kind of scripty font, for example. Down below we have font style. Here you will have the option, depending on the font, to have regular, bold, italic. This one only comes in regular, but you could change that here as well. Then below we're getting into all of the other type of, um, you know, text editing things, including the size, the kerning, the spacing, the case. So here I might say that, you know, I want my titles, for example, to be at, let's try 48 point. Uh, you know, I don't want to change anything about the leading. I can just leave that automatic. The kerning, I'm going to leave. The case, I just want normal. So you see that you can go in and change all of these things that we uh, worked on in a different video. Okay. Then below that, we have the advanced character format. So you can get into um, stretching it out vertically or horizontally, uh, the baseline shift, and so on. 
And then the color obviously is going to be very important. So at this point, I might change it to something obvious like this magenta, just so we can see it. And then there's other things about if you're using an open type font, if you want to do underlines and strike throughs and all of that. So we're not going to get into that. We're going to keep it pretty simple. Up at the top under general, now I might decide to change the name. I might change this to um, something that means something to me later if I set up a lot of character styles. So I might call this um, project titles, for example, if I thought I was going to use the same one everywhere. And I will say OK. And then I'll come over and actually try to apply that to one of these. So here is my, my title as it is right now. So if I click on that frame and make it active, you'll see that over here, if I click on project titles, it actually changes that to my new character style. So I'll zoom in on that a little bit. Oop. Too close. All right. So that's my new style that I created. So here we are with none, and here's my new character style. So if I wanted to do that again, I can make a new one, open it up. I might call this project title two. And I could actually base it on project titles already so that it's starting out with those um, characteristics I just made. Or I could say none. But then I could get in here and say, well, maybe I want to try a version of this title that's bigger and a different color, for example. I'd say OK. And now if I click on this, I can make it that version. So you see that if you set these up for your titles, your body text, your bullet points, and that type of thing, as you go through your project, if you want to make modifications, changing the font size of all of your text from 12 point to 14 point, for example, uh, this would make it very, very easy.